And uh, here is Pastor Jay. The greatest thing you'll ever learn just to love and be loved in return. Is that what we've been talking about here in Gabriel? <laughs> Seeds of wars. Seeds of wars. When I read the next scripture, I can't help but think of the present age we live in right now. Let's go there. New Living Translation, Luke 12, 54. It says, Then Jesus turned to the crowd and said, When you see clouds beginning to form in the west, you say, Here comes the shower. And you were right. 55. When the south blow, wind blows, you say, Today will be a scorcher. And it is so. 56. You hypocrites. You know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky, but you can't interpret the present time. You know, most Christians ha have read the Bible several times, including prophecy and revelation. They have learned the nature and love of Jesus Christ, that the Father didn't send his Son into the world to condemn it. Those who have eyes to see and ears to hear can see clearly that what we are doing in the world in the name of God is wrong. That's what I think anyway. But instead of listening to the Holy Spirit within us, we listen to man telling us that we are the only ones God blesses. This is one of my days. <laughs> and being those children of his, we must remake the world in our image. Wrong. Seeds of wars. That's what it looks like to me. An attitude like this. Why is our image wrong? Because it isn't completely biblical. In my the way I read the Bible, it's not what Jesus taught. It's what man was taught. There's a difference. The government God taught for us to have is closer to, watch out, is closer to socialism. <laughs> when Jesus Christ comes back in the second advent, he's going to set up a monarchy. A government that takes care of the poor, hungry, naked, the orphans and widows, and oppressed and persecuted. A government that shares their first fruits with their brothers and sisters. Matthew 5.10 said in the New Living Translation, God bless those who are persecuted. Who persecuted? <laughs> because they live for God. Well, the kingdom of heaven is theirs. If you're trying to do the right thing, maybe you're really struggling and you don't look like these people who go to church every day. You're really struggling. But inside, you want to do what's right. You're the persecuted. And God says they live for God. I know that some out there are shaking in their boots. But get over it. It's not any American to say socialism or something like that to a God-fearing Christian. A government should want to consider others more important than ourselves and to love our neighbors as we love ourselves, even though they may be our enemies. But no one could be a very successful religious right capitalist if they lived by these principles. Think it over. So these principles have been altered over recent years and many compromise their lives and teachings. Ministers, the CEO of the organizations, their salaries are increased and building funds increase to satisfy large mega religious corporations. I say corporations because that's exactly what they are. I used to be a part of one. Of course, we're incorporated now or else I couldn't be doing this. Families who are rich can afford to send their children to the most expensive conservative schools and Christian colleges to guarantee the movement's success. That's what these big colleges are doing. They're pushing their doctrine down the throat of intelligent people to go out in the world and sell this to the world. We encourage wars in the name of Jesus. 
who we read didn't come to make wars with other nations, but to bring division within our own household with all that we are doing differently from Bible teaching, is it any wonder that nothing seems to go our way anymore? Have you noticed that? Being a real Christian nation, everything should be working for us, you would think. It appears to me that the world is growing farther away from the love of Jesus because of us. How clever of the adversary. Or is this all a part of God's plan to break all religions, even our own? <laughs> even the one you go to on Sunday, to break it before he returns? Is there any wonder that the biggest disastrous attack that finally got our attention was not intended to be against the American people? but against our government's plans for a global economy. Say, oh, Pastor Jay, are you making a uh, prophecy here or something? Or are you just saying something that you have heard from God? No, I haven't. I'm just looking at the facts. The demonstration against our plans of a world domination just happened to be at the World Trade Center. Duh. And second, our war machine, the Pentagon couple of things. Are we getting the message? If they were against the American people or Christianity or the way our lifestyle is, wouldn't they have hit the Capitol and the White House first or some place where American people gather? Maybe it's coming if we don't straighten out. Or was it God who unleashed the devil to enter those following anti-capitalistic domination? to send us a warning to repent. God could do that. Unleash the devil, or just give him the permission, as we read about uh, the Antichrist in the end times. Even Judas. Our response was to get stronger in the way we were going, and attempt to reform the Islamic world into our image. There's Still, great organizations that are attempting to do that. We don't have to do that. God's in charge. He, he is greater than anything we could possibly do. He has a plan. You say, well, aren't we supposed to evangelize? Aren't we supposed to go into the world and tell them the good news? Yes, but is it very good news that we're giving them? Let's rephrase our good news in Jesus Christ. Well... That's for another study. Even most of us teach that there is no greater love than to lay your life down for your brother. If God and Abraham originally saw that the division was good for the present generation and their generation and, and they blessed the seed of Ishmael, why should we be any different? Unless we lust for power, no, not us. And try to produce in advance what Jesus can only do at his second advent. Oh, let's do it now. Let's surprise Jesus. When he comes back, it'll all be done. <laughs> Which actually indicates that deep inside, we don't really feel that we need him. That's scary, folks. Check out your heart. The words Jesus tells to the people of his time are meant for the people of our time as well. He said, you hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky, but you can't interpret these present times. Folks, that's all I'm trying to do right now is trying to interpret these present times. Let's get our head out of the sand and see what's going on. Jesus told us, those who have been given much, much, will be expected. He expects us to follow him, not to go ahead of him. Who was considered the leader of the world? Who was considered the leader of the world? When we began 21st century, when Clinton wanted to build that bridge into the 21st century, who was considered the leader of the world? Who has been given much in these days in order to be the leader? Yep, the USA. <laughs> what have we done with it? 
What have we given back to this world of God's children? Greed, strife, division, and an arrogant thirst for revenge. It's our way or no way. It's my theory that we may have ignited World War III. We hear that all the time. World War III is here. But this time, not a war between nations. We've always had a war between nations, but a war within nations. All these, all the terrorists. Who's a terrorist? A terrorist is someone who is terrorizing you, whatever nation that is. Like, we are coming apart at the seams. The world is coming apart at the seams. The nations within themselves are starting to tear themselves apart. A house divided will fall, the Bible says. We've been teaching the world to taste, taste temptation. Oh, you'll love it. Just look at our movies and our commercials and our athletic games and get like we are. Wear fancy clothes and exp drive expensive cars. Come on, follow us. Promising riches to those who do that. And sexual freedom and power. Join with us and we will have power. Power for what? Yet encouraging them to live by our God's laws of Moses. When we don't. We stand up to be witnesses for God without the good news of knowing Jesus' love and justification for all who would believe in him. Sure, be, in, be any kind of a religion you want to be. But please, believe in Jesus Christ. He's the way, the truth, and the life to the Father. Add that to what you believe. It's like the Messianic Jews. Attempting to apostatize them for what God had established a long time ago. These are seeds of wars. Catch the seed. That will continue until Jesus returns. So be it. One, let's not put a Christian bumper sticker on our car and then curse at other cars. <laughs> and cut them off on the freeway. They can see your bumper sticker. Is that a Christian? I don't know if anybody wanted want to be that way. Two, let's not call ourselves a Christian and then in front of the non-Christian world not do what Jesus would do. They look at us, is that being Christian? Islamic people look at us like, is this being moral? This must be done now before God has to allow even more chastening for us. If the world must hand us over to God for punishment, we may lose all that he has provided for us, for much is required of us. And it's not necessary to suffer this. We don't have to go through this, folks. If we pass on the grace God teaches that we should sow in the world prior to his return. This is what we're supposed to be doing. The good news. Sowing that in the world. For them to make up their own mind. Not kill them. How can they make up their mind then? Now we continue in our verse-by-verse -verse chronological study of our four Gospels. All right, to the New Living Translation, we will be still in the Gospel of Luke because he seems to be the only one really interested in this part of the ministry of Jesus. I don't know why. He's the only one that's been writing about this area right here, but so here it is. And still, the living, New Living Translation, Luke 12, 57. It says, Why can't you decide for yourselves what is right? 58. If you are on the way to court and you meet your accuser, try to settle the matter before it reaches the judge. Or you may be sentenced and handed over to an officer and thrown in jail. 59. And if that happens, you won't be free again until you have paid the last penny. See, these are, are like parables and stuff here that we can figure it out and what the present time is. This could be another warning for the USA in these times. 
And now we are reminded of the earlier scriptures in Matthew's Gospel when Jesus turned up the heat. <laughs> We're going to close with this NIV, Matthew 4:17. It says, From that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent, turning away, for the kingdom of heaven is near. We'll see you next time. Now I live in all your promises, and nothing seems worthwhile except to be in your kingdom of love, my Lord.